who could have predicted that the invention of the pill and also the decriminalization of abortion, which happened soon after, um, would have produced more illegitimacy? Mm. Mm. That's really weird, right? You'd expect the opposite because suddenly women have control over their fertility. Um, but I think the reason is it's because um, the the absolute amount of extramarital or premarital sex that was happening increased. <laughs> mm -hmm. And because contraception, particularly that early form of the pill, isn't actually that reliable, um, of that amount of extramarital, premarital sex that was happening, um, you know, even only 1% of women getting pregnant, that's still a lot. Some of those women are always going to keep the baby. They're not going to want to have an abortion for whatever reason. And so all of a sudden you have this spike in illegitimacy. And I think that produces this sort of feedback loop where it becomes normal and it becomes normal. Um, and now, I mean, I think in the UK, it's like half of kids are now born outside of wedlock. I think we crossed mm -hmm. that threshold a couple yeah. of years ago. Um, and in some groups, it's even higher. Do you think there will be some kind of snap back against it or is it single parenthood all the way down? I don't know. I mean, I suppose it might be that we're just reverting to uh, um, the human mating norm is polygynous, right? <laughs> where you have just explain that for people. <laughs> where you have one male having multiple female partners and some portion of men not having any, mm -hmm. right? The monogamous system that we we that prevails until recently. Um, in the West is quite unusual. I think it's 20% of societies that uh, have a monogamous system, mm -hmm. which does, of course, mean, include some of the most like successful civilizations to have ever existed, mm -hmm. <laughs> including Christendom and Roman, you know, Roman Empire. Um, but it's still kind of an outlier. Um, so it may be that we're just, now that we've um, lifted the monogamous expectation, it may be that people are now reverting to the species norm, which is a smaller number of attractive men having lots of different women. So the Genghis Khan model. <laughs> yeah, maybe not quite as extreme as the Genghis Khan model, but yeah, I'm moving that direction. But effectively moving in that direction. Yeah. Ah, yeah. interesting. Well, <laughs> you already hear uh, stories, I won't mention names of uh, celebrities and uh, successful podcasters who are practicing very, <laughs> very, very much along those lines. Yeah. Um, and I suppose, uh, unless you are really strongly indoctrinated culturally, I certainly am. Like, I'm someone who's just like, I'm just monogamous. Well, my brain's wired in that way, right? I, I guess from a male perspective, you worked your ass off to be at the top of whatever profession you're at. Even if, on a, even if it's not about sex, it's about reproduction. Well, I mean, if it's there and you've got the resources, well, yeah. isn't this what you fought for? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's not, I'm just, I'm surprised in literally zero cases <laughs> when you find out that some high status man has lots of women on the go. I mean, obviously there are men who, who don't do that regardless of how successful they are, but it's so common because I think they kind of can. And also because, I mean, thinking you say politicians, politicians are always kind of famously philanderers also mm. because they, I think a certain type of personality is attracted to politics, I'll put it. Um, gently, um, which is probably also attracted to that kind of, you know, mm. the, lots of dark triad traits, right, mm -hmm. at the top yeah. of politics. Um, they get in less trouble for it now than they used to as well. Mm. In, say, the 1950s, that would have been quite a big deal. Yeah. And hiding the fact of your affairs was, I mean, look at how much effort was put into hiding JFK's philandering, for instance. Mm. We now know about um in retrospect, but at the time, lots of effort made to keep this quiet. I don't know if they'd bother now. I mean, like Trump's philandering, no one seems to care. It's just yeah. like part of the part of the package. Yeah, I mean, it's got to the point now where I go, oh, at least it's not a kid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically, that's the win. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, well, you know, at least it's legal. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> but, yeah. Welcome to trigonometry. <laughs> 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 You're such a Take fucking Take a moment. Idiot. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's genuinely what I think, though. That's how, that's where I am. That's where I am now with it. I go, well, there we go. Oh. But I, I think the thing is as well, like when I see politicians, I also think this phenomenon, which is actually replicated in places like the comedy industry, where you look at a lot of these guys and you think, at school, you wouldn't be the popular guy. You wouldn't be the guy that's attractive to women. 
Nobody has ever wanted to say, oh, I'd love to shag a young conservative. <laughs> yeah. And then you get to the point where you have money, you have power, you have influence, and then all of a sudden the doors open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's even more novel for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, like women attracted to status, like what's new, men are attracted to youth and beauty. Although I always think that we probably do slightly exaggerate that mm -hmm. in terms of, I mean, I think that there are obviously plenty of examples. I mean, Leonardo DiCaprio is kind of the famous example of this, yeah. right? The guy who who will never date a woman over the age of 25. But the, which I always think is kind of funny because he's also never had children with any of these women. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like he's like, the point of that drive is to reproduce with like maximally fertile women with great genes. It's kind of like he's just amassed like a fleet of Ferraris and he's never driven them or something. Like it's like, it's like weird. It's weirdly uh, maladaptive behavior, even though mm. it's driven by an evolutionary. There is a kind of teenage dimension to all of this. Yeah, yeah. that it's just, yeah, just pure status, but nothing more productive than that long term. Right. So coming back to this erosion of monogamy, mm. I'm gonna guess this isn't good for women. No, I don't think so. I mean, there would be some, so someone like Diana Fleischman, who you've had on the pod, mm -hmm. haven't you? She's a friend of mine. She, she's Polly. I'm sure, you'll, you know, she's very open about this. Mm. And she would say that there's like, there's a threshold at w in terms of how attractive a man is, where women are willing to tolerate not being the only woman. Like if, if he's so attractive and the condition of being with him is that you're part of a harem, there's a point where women will be like, okay, some women, I'm some, yeah, women. some women, yeah. Some yeah. will be more averse than others, but like, yeah. And I guess she'd say, well, it's up to them. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that's if if the women are willing to tolerate not being the only one. It's obviously different if if they're being lied to, but if he's being open about what's going on, then I suppose you could say, um, they're adults; they can make the decision. I think though that having, I think it's totally possible and in fact there are loads of cases where this is the case where you can say that at an individual level that might be fine and that for some people that might be fine but having it as the norm yeah is bad well I right coming coming back cases. to our conversation about children growing up without fathers precisely if there's a hundred children with one father it's probably going to struggle to to give them a you know so a, that's a certainly love. true yeah that's certainly true and i think also it's probably bad for societies to have lots of men without mates Mm. Yes. Yeah. Because we do know that fatherhood kind of tames men in terms of men commit less crime and, you know, all the, the, the just societies with lots of sexually frustrated men are more, um, less peaceful societies. And obviously I know you can, you can end up, you can go from that to be like, oh, well, in that case, we need to be apportioning women to all of the incels. And, you know, there's, there's a, <laughs> there's like a very, there's a very dystopian uh, vision that could lead from that insight but it's also just you know you can compare say different African countries some of which are side by side some of which are Muslim some of which are Christian and therefore either permit polygamy or don't and you can see straightforwardly these otherwise similar societies are made more violent and unstable and have more domestic violence and have more child abuse and whatever by virtue of not being monogamous so just based on the data you can quite clearly see that the monogamy norm is a good one